Welcome to our today's virtual press conference. We will be presenting um, our antiviral air purification systems today for virus-free air indoors. My name is Katrin Sauter. I'm responsible for marketing and communications for life sciences and environment with Mann and Hamel. And I will be leading you through the um, press conference today. Um, some housekeeping in advance. We've planned um, about 30 minutes for, minutes for the speeches. Um, followed by 15 minutes of Q&A afterwards. If you cannot see the devices or me or the presentation at once at the moment, um, just make a right mouse click and um, adjust the screen to the frame and then it should work. Um, yeah, so now I would like to present our, welcome our uh, speakers and introduce them to you. Um, we will be starting off with um, Jan-Erik Raschke. He's our director and chief product owner um, for Public Air Solutions. We, he will be followed by Professor Dr. Achim Dittler. He's um, an expert for gas particle systems and head of the Institute of Mechanical Process Engineering and Mechanics at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. He will be followed by um, Dr. Gunnar Marcel Klein, our um, Vice President, R&D, Life Sciences and Environment. And we will be finishing off with Mr. Frank Spiel. He's our Director, R&D, Life Sciences and Environment for the area of air filtration. So why are we here today? Yeah, we have a huge, a huge um, challenge to tackle, to solve. And it turns out that um, filtration solutions are actually one key technology to tackle the challenge of the COVID pandemic. Man and Hummel is the leading um, company for filtration solutions worldwide. And coming from the automotive business, automotive filtration, we've been diversifying um, our business into solutions for water filtration and air filtration outside of the mobility sector in the past decade. Our vision is leadership and filtration. And our mission is to separate the useful from the harmful. For us, everything um, revolves around um, providing solutions for cleaner mobility, cleaner water, and cleaner air every day for you. We've been uh, doing so since almost 80 years now with um, about 22,000 employees worldwide based on 80 locations and have been, um, um, have been uh, generating 4.2 billion um, euros in 2019. Um, yeah, so ever since the corona pandemic, the topic of air filtration has um, um, gotten right into the center of um, all our attention. Um, and uh, yeah, with this, I would like to hand over to Mr. Jan-Erik Raschke. Gentlemen, thank you very much for participating today. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Erik Raschke, and I'm responsible for the complete air filtration systems landscape in Mann Hummel Life Science and Environment. Today, I'm speaking to you not only as an employee of Mann Hummel, but also as a team leader with responsibility for my employees, as well as a husband, as a father of two kids, seven and nine years old, which are right now attending school and which are in an uncertain situation. What we are doing today is we are offering a solution to minimize the risk in all of today's and each minute situation where we are moving through. Just get a see. Filtration is one of the key technologies we'd like to introduce to you. And filtration is not like we have experienced at the beach, like sieving sand by separating the useful from the harmful. It is a little bit more complex. And this is what we have been doing for the last 80 years close to. And in the last 40 years, we are the leading expert in Europe for operating theaters. Could you please continue because, thank you very much. If we are taking a look on what is filtration all about in the back side of the picture, you can see that the particles or the enemy we are taking care about is not only separated by a deep mesh, 
but by an expert technology. And this is what we have been doing for, for 80 years right now. We are designing filters from the single fiber via the material to the filter into the system. So what we are offering is a solution specifically designed towards the problem, which will be covered from A to Z all out of one hand. What are we doing it for? Let's take a small and brief glimpse onto our enemy, which we are facing today. And it is not only the coronavirus, but we are taking a look at all the different viruses and effect on allergens, which are uh, threatening us in the ambient air. We have started on the left side with human hair, and this is also what we experience as quite small. But if we walk down through the ladder, we can see that blood cells and viruses and particles which are carried by the ambient air and by aerosols in the ambient air are much, much smaller. And this is what Mann and Hummel for almost close to 40 years taking care about in operation theaters. Whenever you are in a hospital situation, the clean air which is provided uh, during your operation is provided mainly by Mann and Hummel. And this technology has right now been transferred, taken out of the operating theater and been transferred into your daily life, which as we can see here, in a separate devices. And where do we intend to implement this? Into our daily life, into the situations where each of one of us is right now facing limitations. If we go for simple shopping in a pharmacy in the school areas, we are right now obliged not to meet our friends at the bar. We are not able to attend restaurants, go shopping unharmed, or go on business trips, travel, go to uh, different appointments, uh, like seminars, schools, music. We are offering solutions right now which start in small rooms, which will continue and go to large rooms. We have started with two systems here on the right hand for different applications, which are able to be bound by 230 volt uh, powers, so easy plug and play. One smaller unit uh, covering room sizes up to 70 square meters and a larger unit being able to cover up to 200 square meters. As you can see by the small picture on the left side, we are sucking the ambient air in, potentially exchanging it and cleaning it five to six times per hour. Uh, we are separating the rough dust, where rough are the fine particles we are normally face in the street area, to protect the main weapon against viruses and allergens, which is the HEPA filter. The HEPA filter is abstracting 99.995% of all viruses, allergens, and particles out of the ambient air. So what's behind it can be retrieved as one of the cleanest airs available right now. We have installed a UV light uh, stage, which is used not to clean the air, but to disinfect the filter surface, which will be activated for the system after your timing program, which you are able to implement, has run through to treat the surface area for 30 minutes. Taking a look at the pricing range of those, um, of those devices, which we can see the smaller pricing or the smaller uh, unit is available from single net prices, 3,400 euro. And the larger uh, available unit is at sale for 4,900 units, uh, euros. What we can also additionally offer is because we are looking at a long-term solution, COVID might be followed by an additional threat. And each winter season, we have flus and influ influenza. In the spring season, we have allergens. These systems are working against all those items. So if we take a look at the long run, we are able to help you finance such systems via a leasing sale offering, where, for example, if you take 60 months of leasing for the smaller system and you put it into a classroom with 30 people, the leasing rate of around, or is around covering two euro per child per month. And from my point of view, this is a very small investment to take to protect our kids in school seasons or our employees in the offices. Speaking about the filter exchange, we see that we are roughly about 500 euros per year for the most advanced filter technology in the world. Taking a little bit of a smaller look or a more detailed look into the different characteristics, I'd just like to point out a few very important items here is. A, application in context to noise level. Our systems are one of the most low noise system available on the market, in contrary to the air filtration volume you are going to put through during the hour. As I'm speaking behind me, the system is right now running at 
suitable for coverage of almost 70 square meters as we are in right now of today. So I'm maximum protected and risk minimized. In this contrary, or in addition to this, if I'd like to draw your attention to the power consumption of such a system, and the maximum, the largest system, is consuming less than 500 watts per hour. At an average power price of 20 cents per kilowatt hour, this system is only consuming 10 cents per hour of operating cost. Running right now at only 50% to cover this area, we are around about a power consumption of three to four cents per hour, so minimum operation cost, and this can only be done by experts in filtration. Same deals with the smaller system, but what I would like also to do is direct your attention to noise, because noise is one of the main decision makers for people to buy such systems. We have taken an example here to put it in an environmental landscape of schools. We see that roundabout in schools, the main, uh, the main noise level is around about 50 decibel. So that means in silent working mode for the kids. Both of those systems are in their main operating point around this level. So it is adding up to the noise level which is already created by the kids. And as a permanent and constant noise level, it is falling in the background. It is mainly not recognized by the participants and inhabitants of the room. So we, as Man and Tumme, are really proud to say that what we are offering is a clean air journey and we are developing constantly a clean air platform for all the people around it, starting on the upper left with an outside area where we are tackling outside solutions, going into interaction of people and uh, traffic infrastructure from bus shelter to subway systems, but right now really taking the challenge of providing filtration solutions for daily day-to-day -day situations like in hospitals, shopping malls, fitness centers, school, and everywhere where we are at this point in time not obliged to go to, and we are offering maximum risk minimization. So I would right now like to hand over to Professor Dr. Dittler, and please, I'm really looking forward to his conversation. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning from my side. My name is Achim Dittler. I'm head of the Gas Particle Systems Group at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology. And uh, measuring the performance and effectiveness of a mobile indoor air filter is meeting the core of our competences. Our competences are in generating characterization and separation of gas-borne particulate matter, and that's what it's all about. So we took uh, Mann and Hummel uh, indoor air cleaners to a real use case in a real environment, and what you see here is the classroom of my wife. My wife's an elementary school teacher and is also currently uh, within uh, within this uh, challenging situation, and we were very very happy that we could use this TK850 and uh, investigate its performance in a real environment. So in the very back, you see, you can hardly see it on this picture, is the TK850. Then we have a drop aerosol generator where we created an aerosol, which is uh, consisting of salt particles in a size range of 300 nanometers, which is very, very challenging particle size to take out of the air because it's in between the diffusion and the inertia uh, dominated regimes of particle separation. And so we challenged the device and we challenged it in order uh, with uh, our mobile aerosol measurements. We had one on the very left at the teacher's desks and two others spatially distributed within the classroom, one close to the device and one very far away from the device to investigate how the particle concentration and the filtration performance is at each and every single point of this classroom. And when we go through the next slide, we see the results that we took. So we first of all created a very high concentration and then uh, to, to compared the filter uh, operation to a non-filter operation. And as you see, when you don't have a filter operating, it's what it is that the particulate matter concentration uh, remains at a very high level, of course. And uh, then when you put the filter device into operation, you see that the particle concentration goes down over time quite significantly. And of course, this is depending on the throughput of your filter device. So if you operate the filter uh, device at 850 uh, cubic meters per hour, the, uh, the decay is the steepest. And with this operating point, we can uh, minimize the, uh, the concentration 
uh, almost uh, almost homogeneously in the rooms, and we can reduce 50% of the particles at each and every position of the room after a half an hour. And now more than 90% of the particulate matter is removed uh, within one and a half hours. Well, that that that's a, a very good uh, very good result because the uh, the filter device, the size, the volume flow. Uh, was uh, challenging in these conditions to the room. So um, the, the, the device uh, volume flow to the room was like a, a relationship of four. And when we click in the next information, we'll see that that the, the device uh, uh, handles the uh, the creation of particulate matter in a in a very very excellent way. What you see here is that we installed a strong, a very strong aerosol source for a limited amount of time after 30 minutes of operation. And the upper curves are the curves that you that you that you gain when you don't have a filter in operation. So first of all, you see within the first half hour that pure ventilation, uh, which is bringing in uh, particulate matter like fine dust from the ambient in the classroom. Uh, has a level which is uh, 10 to 20 times higher than than what uh, you can achieve as in particulate matter level in the classroom. Then we, when we put in a strong source and create lots of particulate matter by our droplet generator, and we run, you have a classroom without any uh, particulate matter separation. You see that the curves are on a very very high level. And compared to that, the operation with the dry clean shows that you can limit the uh, increase during the strong uh, aerosol source presence in the room. And once the aerosol source is leaving the room, the uh, particulate matter concentration goes down very quickly and reaches a level of uh, pure ventilation levels from, from ambient air um, uh, after, after, after a certain amount of time. And then it keeps uh, keeps removing, keeps filtering uh, the air in the room, and you are below levels that are in ambient uh, air because the, the the filter takes out whatever particulate matter comes into it. The TK850 was a little bit under dimensioned. That's why I tried to um, to communicate before because the room was a little bit too uh, too uh, too large for the device. And of course, you can do uh, you, you can do a, a, a you can reach a better decrease in particulate matter concentration when you just take a, another Mann and Hummel uh, device. So take the the next level of devices, which is uh, on the next slide. Take the SQ two thousand five hundred, uh, which uh, which provides a higher volume flow, and then you can you can reach decay rates uh, by reducing uh, particulate matter. 50% within four minutes and uh, more than 90% within a quarter of an hour, which is uh, amazing. Uh, I mean, when you when you have cross flow ventilation naturally over windows that are wide open and doors that are wide open, you reach levels of um, of uh, of a of a, of a 50 60% reduction within two minutes. So this device is very very close to wide opening window reduction. Um, and is uh, amazing for what you can perform uh, when you do the right pick uh, concerning the, uh, what, the the relation of volume flow through the device to the, uh, the to the room size in terms of volume. So the experts at Mann and Hummel will be there to help you pick the right uh, device for your application because you can uh, remove uh, well almost any particle uh, within uh, within a very, very short period of time, which is extremely expo important uh, when you have situations where uh, groups come in and go out of rooms. So you have frequent changes because the filter just keeps operating and, and removing particulate matter from the air. So that's what we, uh, what we experienced uh, while testing uh, those filter devices in real world applications in real world environments. Thank you very much. And I look forward to your questions uh, later in the discussion. Thank you. So good morning. Um, I would like to continue. Thank you, Professor Dittler, uh, for explaining uh, the validation of our products. My name is uh, Gunnar Klein. I'm head of engineering in the life science and environment uh, business unit at Mann & Hummel. 
I would like to start uh, yeah, to give you, as uh, also um, uh, already briefly uh, touched, uh, we are um, here uh, a filter expert and the leading company in filtration, and uh, we offer a big variety of filters, from the filter in the car you drive, over the filter in the household where you live, whether it's an HVAC system or whether it's a kitchen filter, which cleans up uh, the exhaust of kitchen kitchen fumes, up to whether you enter the airport and have uh, clean air in these uh, waiting halls in airports, and uh, over uh, other applications like, uh, as already mentioned, uh, the operation theater, clean room, uh, and highest air quality we can deliver. It works, and you can hear me. Okay, so um, to do this, uh, we have um, one of the largest uh, groups uh, of uh, technicians, engineers, and filter experts here at Manet Hummel. Uh, 1,200 people working at various places in the world to develop uh, the best performing solutions. Uh, what does that mean, uh, best performing solution? Um, this is always the same story behind in the, in the filtration. We have to deliver highest filtration efficiency at the lowest energy consumption, and the durability of the filter, of course, has to be maximized. And this we have optimized in a very, very wide field of, uh, of applications over all the years, and we transfer this knowledge from one application uh, to the other. So to give you some a brief insight what we are doing, we are doing a computer tomographic picture of our filter media. The filter media is the heart of the filter. So if the the filter performs well if you have the best filter media and have the best arrangement of the filter element and the best flow conditions. So the filter media is the core, and this core, this is our core competence to develop this uh, with computer topographic picture, make a digital twin. The digital twin is then put into the computer. We optimize the fiber structure. We get uh, best performing technology and media out of it, make the prototypes, make the, uh, make the samples, and then we industrialize it. Uh, so uh, the next step is then that we arrange this best performing filter media in the optimum filter element design. And this uh, we are doing uh, uh, with the help uh, more and more with artificial intelligence so that we uh, optimize the shape, the design, uh, the format of the pleats, and we can then offer the best performing filter system. Uh, so uh, And uh, this uh, led then uh, that uh, we uh, just... Uh, that we can solve problems with the filters. So filters are always there to solve problems, uh, whether it's uh, the pollution by industrial equipment over the last decades, and a lot of you know, big industrial zones are now clean uh, today, even in, uh, in, in Asia or in other areas where we have so far still high pollution, but they have also increased the application of filters, and uh, this is a big success. Uh, so we can uh, enable clean uh, environments with filters in various applications. One very recent uh, development we have made, uh, you may have heard about it, where these uh, uh, filters where we can reduce the uh, emission in urban areas. So uh, at the Neckar Tor in Stuttgart, we made a pilot or we make a big installation, and now the air is much cleaner than before. So uh, we solve uh, uh, problems, uh, and now we have a big problem ahead, uh, so which is to live and work with Corona. To click, and uh, here we, uh, uh, we are, can now contribute with uh, very powerful solutions. And uh, this uh, solution, as explained by uh, uh, Mr. Raschke and by Professor Dittler, uh, is uh, uh, very feasible to uh, reduce the air pollution in and the the virus uh, in uh, closed rooms by 99.995%. Uh, so each time when the filter, which is then uh, uh, next to me here, the air leaves the filter, I breathe really absolutely operation theater quality air. Okay, what does that mean for the room? The room uh, is, of course, uh, uh, then has not the 99.95 reduction of the virus, uh, but uh, because the air is mixing, but as Professor Dittler explained, we can reduce the uh, aerosol concentration by a factor of 100 in a very short time. So if you switch the filter on before you enter the room, you have you can reach a level of 1% uh, of the initial average aerosol concentration in a room. 
what does that mean? The virus do not has any transport mechanism to, to, to come to you. Yeah? So we are really safe in such environments with 1% of the initial aerosol concentration. And just to give you an example, uh, which is maybe, uh, can, you, can you keep in your mind? In Germany, we have a very nice area with very good air quality. It's called Black Forest. And the Black Forest uh, has an average aerosol concentration of lower than two micrograms per cubic meter. So this is really perfect air quality. And if you install the filter, you immediately reduce it from 100 micrograms, which is a typical indoor air pollution uh, or, or uh, aerosol concentration if the, if the school is crowded with people or the classroom and you have uh, breathing persons, you have maybe 50 to 100 micrograms. And 100 factor less, yeah, you end up at one microgram or even less. So below two micrograms, this is black forest air quality. So this is our offer. We can provide now to the communities and we would like to contribute to uh, um, yeah, to enable a living uh, and working in safe environments. And with that, I would like to turn it over to Mr. Frank Speer. Yeah, okay, thank you. Good morning, everybody. My name is Frank Speer. I'm Director R&D at Mann Hummel Life Science Environment Air Filtration. So my task today, or two tasks, to be honest, uh, I have one point to introduce a little bit the filtration technology. Yeah, We heard about uh, operation theater quality. We heard about black forest air quality. Uh, but what drives us uh, to that, so the HIPAA filtration I would show you. The other point is, uh, we saw loan standing systems, let's say uh, systems um, which run without air conditioning in a building, but we have done also a technology transfer for that, from that technology uh, for your HVAC system running might be in a building uh, to deliver also that kind of air quality for you. Yeah? So um, yeah, let's dive a little bit into the HEPA te technology, HEPA filtration. In those days, uh, a really stressed word, let's say. Everybody talks about HEPA filter. But uh, to be honest, do you know what a HEPA filter is, really? Uh, HEPA in that terms means high efficiency particle air filter. Yeah. So simply that what you expect if you buy air filter, it should be high efficient. Um, <clears throat> so as that is not a copy protected word, uh, the legislation, the standardizations committees in, in Europe and meanwhile as well worldwide decided to drive a standard that we can do a test, a validation of those filters and finally a classification so that we really, really know what kind of filter we have, what filter class, what efficiencies. Yeah, and uh, this is uh, done in the EN standard 1822. So that's a main point uh, I would like to emphasize you, if you buy machines, if you look on filters, if you look especially in those days to HEPA filters, yeah, Jan Eric stated, yeah, HEPA filter can deal uh, with the viruses, with microbial contamination, also with other dangerous small particles, but it should definitely be classified according the 1822 standard. Yeah, that's a main point. In the standard, um, we classify the filter as at its weakest point. Uh, each filter has with a different physical effects uh, a weak point with the highest penetration. And especially at that point, HEPA filters are tested in the standard EN8022. And then we can divide it, classify it. So the H13, for example, has efficiency at the most penetrating particle size. Yeah? We call that a particle size with the highest penetration. Um, the H13 has 99.95% efficiency. The H13 even, H14 even has a 99.995 efficiency at these critical particle size. Yeah? And that is exactly this MPPS to give a, a little bit of a size is uh, in HEPA filters, so 0.18 micron. So this is a bigger size of the coronavirus. Yeah? So at this, uh, size, the filters are tested and are high efficient. Yeah, with that technology, we run, um, Jan-Erik mentioned it, uh, Gunnar also mentioned it, we run operation theaters since 60 years. Uh, we are leading 
technology um, in, in that area. And uh, these transfer from there, so having the same filter classes we use in Operation Theater, we have installed in that machines. And furthermore, we did another technology transfer uh, with the most sophisticated media we see today's uh, coming from clean rooms in microelectronics. Um, it's a synthetic filter media, it's a membrane media, yeah, a PTFE membrane media, and uh, it offers with a very, very small fibers on different physical effects, the main effect, the slip flow effect, it offers very, very low pressure drop. You might question now, well, why is it that special? The interesting part, and also there Jan Eric mentioned it, uh, <clears throat> the noise is a big driver for these uh, for these machines. Installing it in a classroom, installing it in in working areas, yeah, uh, at a lawyer's office, etc. It should not be that noisy. And uh, the recommendations we receive always have an H14, have a low noise level. So with these PTFE media, we can catch that, we can match it, um, because with a low pressure drop, we have nice effects. Uh, at the same fan speed, uh, we higher the air exchange. Um, if you lower the fan speed, uh, we lower also the noise level. So in combination saying that high efficient media with a low pressure drop serve exactly that what we need in those machines yeah, highest uh, clean air delivery rates at uh, low noise level. So the, the next point looking then, uh, we did, oops, we did with that technology a transfer, yeah, taking this PTFE media, um, did a transfer to HVAC systems, especially in HVAC systems here in Europe, uh, we have another standard uh, driving us, it's the fire protection. Yeah, um, I said this technology, the EPDFE, is coming from industrial zones, from microelectronics, where you have other standards. If it comes to fire protection in buildings, and uh, especially in Germany, in, in Berlin, we suffered, you know, maybe with the airport, it was the uh, fire protection yeah, uh, and the preventive fire protection. So to develop filter media along that is a very important part. Uh, we could make it happen and where we are really proud as a leader in filtration technology uh, to manage it. Uh, the most challenging media type, the EPTFE membrane, um, to classify it according to the standard for buildings. It's the EN 15423 uh, for fire protection in buildings. And there is described to test the filters along the EN 13501 and classified as class E. Also that we could manage for the membrane. So uh, this shows now that we have a media we can transfer easily into buildings, all applications like airports, like shopping halls, and with that ease the life a little bit or at least run the, the facilities most safe as you can. Yeah. Um, of course, you need to have the, the um, all measures to, to take care, like, like mouse protection, like, like keeping distance. But with that technology, we could serve at least the supply air on a level you find in operation theaters, you find in pharmaceutical applications, in filling, in production of pharmaceuticals, in production of baby food. So you see highest level of security. And we could offer that with these filter type. What we did now, when you look, uh, you see on the upper side, the typical installation in a HVAC system, yeah, two pocket filter or could be also pocket compact filter, but usually the, the standard from Eurovan, the 4-2-3, uh, four describes you should have an efficiency of 90% against particle of one micron. Uh, that is sufficient done with, a part, with two pocket filter stages. If it comes now to the needs, uh, especially in the winter months, you have recirculation air in the units. Uh, so you exhaust air from the rooms, from a shopping mall, with the risk uh, to have the uh, infected people. So you exhaust maybe some, some aerosols contaminated uh, and bring the air again in a room. 
uh, you should be sure that your filter is also on a HEPA level there to have supply air on operation theater level. And that is exactly what you see in the picture below, yeah, where you have a pocket filter. At that time, our highest sophisticated filter media uh, in a pocket filter on a EPM165 level with a very, very high dust holding capacity yeah, to cover the, the dust load coming from the room. And afterwards, you have a compact filter in the standard sizes, uh, again, with the EPTFE membrane. Yeah, so that this combination, looking on the uh, total um, operational pressure drop, has the same level as the pocket filter solution has before. Yeah? So meaning you can run your system without any uh, big deal of, of dismantling the ventilation system, uh, dismantling the fan, uh, doing some construction work. No, you can easily transfer it. Yeah, it's uh, all the dimensions are along the European standard 15, 5 or 6. So meaning you have the, the standard size you have from pocket filters or compact filters translated into HEPA filters. So it's a very easy retrofit. Uh, and then your supplier is on highest cleanliness level so you, that you protect people and also with the HVAC system can come back to normal life. So that's our contribution. Uh, we hope um, it, it fits for you. It is, uh, of course, uh, our, our sales engineers in the fields, your contact uh, will be with you because there, there are some uh, slightly changes maybe in the, in the units. You have to, to check it uh, if it fits directly, but we guide you to that. Uh, we will help you, but definitely from filtration perspective, we have a solution um, to protect you and yeah, to make these times maybe a little bit more comfortable, at least in, in buildings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frank. Thank you very much um, to all the speakers for their um, great contributions. Um, we have now come to the end of the press conference and I would like to start the Q&A session now. Um, feel free to just type in your question into the chat and we will call you by your name one after the other and then you can unmute you yourself and um, pose your question through your own microphone.